Holy crap! You caught me playing my Taylor acoustic guitar on camera, and I forgot to hide the logo. I sure hope that Taylor Guitars doesn't sue me for trademark infringement. Hey everybody, this is TJR. I've been getting asked what I think of the recent video released by Gibson Guitars entitled Play Authentic and the recent news story that Gibson Guitars is suing Dean Guitars. Now, before I talk about either of these, I want to just uh, share a little reminiscence from earlier this year. In January, I attended the 2019 NAMM show in Anaheim, California, and one of the big news stories was that Gibson Guitars was back. Gibson had been absent the previous year, and of course, a lot of this had to do with the bankruptcy situation that they were embroiled in at that time. Prior to the 2019 NAMM show, there were a lot of videos being posted asking, is this the end of Gibson Guitars? And I know because I made one of those videos. I was there uh, for the preview day, which is the Wednesday before the NAMM show begins, and Gibson was there too to uh, basically premiere and preview their new Chuck Berry model guitar. Their new CEO, James Curley, appeared, in, and I have to admit, I don't think in, in any of my memory has a CEO for Gibson ever appeared at the NAMM show. But he was there to introduce the new guitar, and he was very open to everybody. In fact, throughout the whole show, all five days, that's the four days of the show and the preview day, he was out there making himself available to the general public. He was talking to people. He was being very open with everybody. One thing you have to understand is that at past NAMM shows, Gibson had gained a bit of a reputation for being snobbish. At one point, they even made their booth so exclusive that you couldn't enter unless you had one of their invitations. However, at the 2019 show, there was a sense of openness and welcoming to their booth. Clearly, Gibson was trying to rebrand themselves. They were trying to say, look, we made some very bad mistakes. We want to prove now that we're here to make guitars for the people, for guitars for professionals, guitars that people want. And prior to all this, Gibson had developed a very bad reputation with musicians. Uh, complaints about the guitars being way overpriced and that the quality of these guitars was not matching or exceeding the price points that they were asking. The general consensus was, was that only doctors and lawyers could afford their guitars. Also, a, a lot of musicians out there said, you know, there's no point in buying a Les Paul. You can go out and buy an imitation Les Paul from a legitimate manufacturer uh, that's going to be made better and cost less. Once again, prior to the bankruptcy, the basic feeling was, was that they were just coasting on the fumes of their reputation at this point. But with their newly appointed CEO, James Curley, leading the way at the 2019 NAMM show, Gibson did nothing but spread goodwill to manufacturers, to music retailers, and to musicians, and to me. And I talked about this in a video I did during the 2019 NAMM show. I really felt that they were making nothing but positive steps to reestablish their brand and say, hey, we're here to reestablish our legacy. We are here to start making quality instruments again. That's why it was such a surprise to see Gibson just literally flush all that goodwill down the toilet uh, with the release of the video, Play Authentic, and with the announcement that they were suing Dean Guitars. So first, let's talk about suing Dean Guitars. Dean Guitars has been in the business for well over 40 years. Yes, they do make guitars that look very much like the Les Paul, that look very much like the Gibson Flying V, to name a few. This sort of thing is very common and has been common now for the last 40, 50 years within the world of musical instruments. Legitimate manufacturers copy each other all the time. They create replicas of the Gibson Les Paul or the Fender Stratocaster. They change the headstock. And of course, they have a different brand logo. A lot of people have already stated this on YouTube, but if Gibson wanted to sue Dean Guitars for trademark infringement, they should have done it 40 years ago. There are tons of manufacturers that do Strat copies. Not long ago, some years back, Gibson Guitars released a line of Jimi Hendrix tribute guitars. Uh, they did a Jimi Hendrix Les Paul. They did a Jimi Hendrix Flying V. 
The Les Paul and the Flying V are both well-known Gibson models. But Gibson also released a Jimi Hendrix Stratocaster. Yes, they did. They released a Strat copy, like a lot of manufacturers do. And like all the manufacturers that have done Strat copies and Les Paul copies, they did the obvious thing. They changed the headstock, and of course, they changed the logo and made sure it did not look like the Fender logo. Gibson, you are calling the kettle black with this. I, I want to state that I'm not a lawyer, but based on everything I've read, if you are going to sue someone for trademark infringement, you don't do it 40 years later. You have to do it at the time that it happens if you have any chance of winning that lawsuit. 40 years later, it's too late. You've let that right lapse for that reason, especially when there are so many other companies doing the exact same thing, including you, Gibson. Now, it would be different if, say, Dean Guitars was releasing a Les Paul that had the exact same headstock, that had a logo that looked very similar to Gibson's. They could maybe spell it a little differently, but it looks exactly the same, has the same lettering, or it says Gibson on it. Then, yes, you would have a case. And that's what counterfeiting is, is when you create counterfeit copies and try to pass them off as the real thing. Dean Guitars is not doing this. Dean Guitars is doing what a lot of music manufacturers do. They're creating their own version of the Les Paul or the Stratocaster, and they're putting a different headstock and a different logo on it. Gibson, are you going to sue D'Angelico Guitars too? I mean, they have body styles that are similar to yours. What about Ibanez Guitars? They also have body styles that are similar to yours. I mean, what do you really think this is gonna do for your reputation? So this brings us now to the video that Gibson released a few days earlier entitled Play Authentic. In this video, the company's uh, director of brand experience, Mark Ignasi, uh, talks about counterfeit guitars, you know, coming from overseas, made with inferior quality. Now, counterfeit guitars are when you make an exact replica of the brand name instrument uh, right down to the logo, only it's not the brand name, it's a counterfeit. No one blames Gibson for going after this, and they should. But in the video, he basically implies that any guitar manufacturer that copies their design styles or replicates their design styles is guilty of trademark infringement. Any copy of any one of those designs that we've named is in fact, by definition, a counterfeit Gibson guitar. And of course, this is ridiculous for all the reasons I've just stated. What I have in my hand right now is a Taylor a GS Mini acoustic guitar. And this is a kind of a standard, you know, acoustic guitar body shape that all guitar manufacturers use, and that includes Gibson guitars. This one is from Taylor. And uh, you can see, of course, the Taylor logo. Taylor can't copyright this body shape any more than Gibson could, or any more than Ibanez could, or Fender could. It's kind of like trying to copyright a chair. A chair has a certain design that everybody uses. Now, true, you can make changes to that design. You can do different things with it. You can stylistically make it look different or feel different. But a chair is still a chair. It's got four legs. It's got a back to rest your back on, and it's got a seat that you can sit on. And part of the reason why so many guitars share the same body style is because for practical reasons. You have to be able to comfortably sit it on your lap when you are playing it. And that is why you see so many guitars with the same body shape. This includes Gibson Les Paul, that body shape. This includes the body shape of a Fender Stratocaster or a Fender Telecaster. And in the video, he warns other manufacturers saying, you're on notice. To the manufacturers out there, we want you to know that you've been warned. We're looking out and we're here to protect our iconic legacy and the designs that we've created over generations. But the video gets even more ridiculous where he talks to the entertainment industry and says to them, stop covering up our logos in your movies and TV shows. To all the people in the film and television and commercial industry, reach out to us. We want to work with you. Stop taping over the logos on the headstock. By the way, that's not enough to, to get out of a trademark infringement anyway. Contact us, we wanna work with you. We wanna be partners with you. We wanna help bring authenticity to your projects. Mark Ignisi, the only reason why a movie studio or a TV studio will cover up a brand name on a product that's being shown in one of their productions 
is because that product manufacturer hasn't yet paid the studio for product placement. That's right. Brands pay to have their brand name shown in a motion picture or a TV show, not the other way around. They don't pay you, you pay them. Didn't anybody on Gibson's legal team know this? This video, I would, I would laugh at this video if it wasn't so beyond, blindingly arrogant. This video just screams arrogance. And my first knee-jerk reaction is to just say, don't buy Gibson. Just don't. Don't buy anything from them. It's great if you want to buy a vintage guitar from the 70s or the 50s, whatever. You know, if you have that kind of money, that's fine. But don't buy anything from them. That's how I feel right now. You know, I honestly don't know what Gibson could say that could turn this around, really, because I don't think I could trust them anymore. I trusted them after the 2019 NAMM show. I really believe that they wanted to turn things around. <sighs> you know, if you never bought a Gibson again, I wouldn't blame you. Gibson, you need to be making good guitars, not suing your competition. This is TGR. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Everybody, thank you so much for watching and showing your support every time you click like, every time you click subscribe. And of course, if you're a new watcher, be sure to ring the bell so you can know when I release new videos. If you want to take that extra step and help me make more videos, I ask you to please consider becoming a Patreon supporter. Pledging as little as the cost of one cup of coffee a month will make a huge difference if enough of you do it. And it will help me make more of the kinds of videos that you want to see. And if you can't be a patron supporter, I still appreciate the fact that you took the time to watch this video. Everybody, thanks again. Take care. Bye-bye.